So hello everyone, I'm Jesse Perkins, Executive Director of the Bethel Area Chamber, and I'm happy to welcome you to today's edition of the Lunchbox Zoom series with the Mahusik Sustainable Tourism Committee. Uh, please, if you're not speaking, make sure you're on mute so we don't pick up on your background noise. And also, as you just heard from the Zoom lady, this session is being recorded. Uh, this is the 10th time we've done this year, which is pretty remarkable given everything else that has been going on. And uh, it was a very busy summer tourism wise. Uh, some, some inns, hotels are reporting double occupancy from 2019. They don't, we don't talk about 2020. Um, so yeah, people want to visit. And uh, like so many other destinations across the country and the world, um, but persistent labor shortages are really hindering business. And I will just give us the small example is that the chamber just hosted its first big town festival, two year arts fest, uh, which usually has the chowder cook off as a major component of the event. And usually we have eight or 12 restaurants participating, but this year exactly zero restaurants, even the ones that have been around hundred years uh, could spare the staff to participate. This is just a tiny example of how workforce shortage can ripple throughout the community and this, this trend was well underway before the pandemic, as we all know. It's, it's, it's easy to think, oh, this just started, but no, these, these things were all just, they were pretty close to reaching their breaking point even before the pandemic. And now we just have a whole other host of issues to deal with. Um, in other Mahusik Way news, we're moving closer to wrapping up our video project with Main Mountain Media, and we're toying with getting some kind of gathering going to celebrate two years since the original Community Destination Academy at the Bethel Inn. That was in October 2019. And we also intend to launch a newsletter and continue these lunchbox Zooms to keep the conversation percolating throughout the seasons to come. But today's topic is regional collaboration. This is one of our pillars, that's been our theme. And uh, today we'll discuss the ways Musick area communities are working together to address common challenges and support sustainable tourism. Uh, today we'll hear about a recent joint meeting of the area select boards in emerging work to expand access to high-speed internet service. And we'll also discuss the housing challenges facing residents of all demographics. We have some special guest stars today. We have at least three town managers, uh, Loretta Powers from the town of Bethel, Kim Sparks from the town of Greenwood, and of course, Bern Maxfield from the town of Woodstock. Um, really, really glad to be working with them on all of these things. So now I will kick it over to Amy Scott, who will introduce this particular pillar of regional collaboration. And in the meantime, I will post the agenda in the chat so you can follow along. Hey everyone, Amy Scott from the Northern Forest Center. And uh, just briefly, I think you're all familiar with what is meant by regional collaboration, but specifically around this uh, whole Mahusik Sustainable Tourism Initiative, regional collaboration came up at the summit that was held in January of uh, 2020 as a really important piece of what's needed to put things into place to support a long-term plan for sustainable, uh, for sustainability for this community as a place that sees, as Jesse just said, a lot of visitation and also is home to a lot of um, people who live here year round. Um, the place sees a lot of use and is, is also operating as a region, both at the, you know, in terms of the uh, school district and people sharing service centers and um, a lot of people and visitors, you know, sharing, sharing the region as a whole. Uh, so working together among the towns is very important to um, really address some of these issues as well as, you know, not just at the municipal level, but uh, which is mostly what we're focusing on today, but uh, collaborating at the community level and at the nonprofit level uh, is also really important and at the business level. So today we won't really be talking too much about those points, but I did want to point out that those are pieces that um, came up at the summit, were identified, um, and are important to um, in order to implement all of these different pieces, but they you know, were not necessarily addressing them today. 
but it is happening. Um, there's a great uh, sort of spirit of collaboration and practice of collaboration that is already in place in this in this region, um, and you know, putting it toward specifically toward uh, sustainable tourism is what you know this work is all about. Uh, so that's just a little bit of kind of where it came from and uh, what some of the other pieces of regional collaboration are that we'll eventually be sharing more about, but that many of you are also already involved in. Um, and with that, uh, I believe it is going over to Vern next, is that right? Right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. I am Vern Maxfield from town of Woodstock and uh, still very pleased that things are moving along like they are. Uh, two years ago, I don't think we would have ever thought we would be at this point in the collaboration that we're sensing now. Uh, back a lot of years ago, um, I think Kim will remember when we used to try and get together with Greenwood, West Paris and Woodstock for some coffees <laughs> and talk about joint efforts and things that were going on. And it's always been my desire to get us all together. And as you know, we've had three joint board meetings now with the uh, four boards of selectmen, which I have found very encouraging. Um, I think we've got a lot of good things ahead of us in working together. Um, there's always been that spirit of independence in our little towns, but I think we're realizing that we can't be uh, lone soldiers anymore. We've got to work together to get some things done. Um, as, as has come out of the Community Destination Academy and the Mahusik Way, um, we had that joint meeting back in March before everything changed. We've had two since, and the discussions I have found to be very uh, productive. Nothing new has happened since we had the third meeting, but uh, the managers, we will be getting together to talk next steps here shortly. Uh, we're still working on possible changes to solid waste, maybe working more closely together. We're gonna talk about joint purchasing to save some money and uh, and I think almost more than that to be able to work together more. Uh, I have sensed a great sense of the boards wanting to work together. I felt that the conversations that we've had at those meetings were, they flowed very easily. And I was looking for that to see how that might happen. Yes, we're all unique in our own boards, but we're also doing the same thing for, um, for the people of our area. Um, we are working on the possibility of joining the transfer stations together. I don't know how far out that might be, but I've been talking about it for 10 years now, <laughs> hoping that that could come to pass. Uh, I think it would be good if we could make them more accessible. I'd love to see at least, I would love to see them open some evening hours. I. Where was I? We, we were riding over the weekend and I saw a transfer station that's open till eight in the evening. And I thought, yes, huh. I think that's a great, great step. But that's to be dis discussed. Um, last time, uh, actually since the last selectman's meeting, we had a meeting with Mike and the Northern Forest uh, group about housing for the area. And I know that's a big thing on Retta's mind is more housing for the Bethel area for the workforce. And maybe you'd like to jump in rather and make a few comments about that. It's not as big an issue here in Woodstock or Greenwood, but it probably will be down the road. And if we can all work together to make something happen, great. Yeah, I, I get a lot of um, comments about where am I gonna live? And you know, when I work at the ski way or I work Bethel Inn or whatever, um, the rents are crazy. Everybody's doing Airbnbs and we do need workforce housing. Um, Neil's on here too, and Sunday River, I think, wants to, you know, has issues with that also. So hopefully in our next meeting, we'll have some of the business owners like we talked about um, yeah. and get together. And I don't, I don't have a solution because we don't have much land around here. And I, you know, of where to do something like this, but I think we got to look into it a little harder than we do or have mm -hmm. been in the past because things are changing. And fast. I just think, I think the fact that we're talking about it 
and moving in that direction is going to make a big difference. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. And we got to keep it going. The, as, as I've said a number of times, the select boards have agreed to meet twice a year. And so the next one I would think might be, um, I don't know, I guess I was thinking midwinter, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think that's it from here, unless you've got any questions. That's, that's I think amazing. The uh, regional, I think the regional collaboration is on the march. That's amazing news. I'm, I'm glad to hear the report right from your mouths, uh, Vernon and Retta. Um, and I hope, Kim, that you would concur. Uh, yeah, the housing thing is something that we hear on stop. And again, it was... This is not just something that started with the pandemic. It was already mm -hmm. a serious issue. Mm -hmm. Now this has just accelerated the process. You know, like the, you know, we're probably, if without the pandemic, this is where we would be five or six years from now. Um, just sort of accelerated the trends. I, that's my personal belief. We, we get a lot of calls here as the community and visitor information center. We get all kinds of calls about, about this. And, it, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I could go on and on for the rest of the half an hour with that conversation. So um, there's lots to talk about. I'm sure we will definitely be uh, following up on that, that housing conversation. Um, but there are other ways in which the towns are collaborating. And Mike Wilson is next up on the agenda to talk about the broadband initiatives that have been going on for a few years now and are getting kind of exciting. Yeah, thank, thanks everyone. And again, so I'll dive into the broadband piece. Again, I think as an example of pretty, pretty real time, increasingly tangible collaboration among, among the four you know, core, core communities we, we've typically talked about in this process of Bethel, Greenwood, Woodstock, and Newry, um, plus a few other sur surrounding communities on the issue of, of broadband. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to go too far down the road in terms of the details of the issue and its importance, but I think we've all seen in the past year and a half, uh, it, was a, it was an important issue prior to the pandemic uh, with the emergence of the pandemic and our response to that the last year and a half, I think it's really put a spotlight on the fundamental need for uh, everyone to have access to high speed internet, internet connectivity at their home or business. Um, and this ties into you know, just general community function. It ties into people's just personal lives. It ties into business. It ties into the, the visitor economy and people being able to travel and extend stays in the area, th things like that. So it's a really broad reaching issue in general. And I know the work that's been proceeding has actually grown from another regional thing in the, con in the content, con constructive regional collaboration. There's another collaboration uh, that a number of us are involved with called Maine West, uh, which is collaborating across sectors. So really trying to look at conservation, economic development, health education, and a slightly bigger region. So looking at the Bethel area, the Romford River Valley area, and the Oxford Hills. Um, so a few years ago, that group uh, recognized broadband as a, as a really fundamental cross-cutting issue and started doing some some organizing and coordination and a lot of and I will say it's too bad that she's not here today but a lot really important leadership on this has been provided by Mia Purcell from Community Concepts Finance Corporation and we've worked really closely on this. Um, here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, um, so about a year ago we organized something called the Maine West Broadband Boot Camp and we invited folks from different communities across this geography just to participate in a in kind of a training program to help people understand the issue and how they could get involved and help move this issue in their communities. And as part of that work, it was notable that there were a couple representatives each from Bethel, from Newry, from Greenwood, from Woodstock. Um, and fortuitously to some degree, not enough for any of any one of those communities to form a committee just from a pure capacity standpoint. So it, it seemed to make sense and folks from those communities decided to form their own uh, Mahusik Community Broadband Committee. 
so again, proactively looking at an issue that everyone felt could be addressed more effectively at a, at a regional scale than a single community scale. Um, so without beating it up too much, that committee formed about a year ago. Um, it's been meeting very consistently since then, both doing the training that it needs to do to understand the issue, but then importantly this past winter, um, really reaching out directly to the four select boards to begin with. So the, the broadband committee met with, and again, initially those four select boards with two, two requests. Uh, one was for each of them to adopt a shared goal on this issue oh. is to, uh, I'm looking for so all these select boards have been officially you know kind of adopted a goal. Of, well closed. Uh, Jonathan, you're you're oh you're muted now. Okay. <laughs> uh, of providing universal, affordable, reliable, and future ready internet service to people in, in their communities. So all so it was exciting just simply to have all the communities on board with a shared goal. Uh, but then each of the communities also allocated a little bit of funding. Uh, to a shared project. And so this was, again, another little bit of a breakthrough from a, a regional collaboration standpoint was all four of those communities putting money cooperatively into a single, a single project. Um, and over the course of this, we ended up also bringing in Gilead. So that's, Gilead is also now part of the Music Broadband Initiative, Albany and Milton Plantation. Mm. Uh, so with that funding from the towns and some additional funding from the Betterment Fund and a little bit from the Northern Forest Center, uh, we contracted with an outfit called Casco Bay Advisors and have finally done like the definitive mapping. Like we know, like all the select boards, the towns, the town managers and the committee now know like down to the house and the driveway, what kind of internet service is available across this region. Um, and that is information that was impossible to get otherwise because it's just simply not available from the internet service providers and the way that data is, is re reported. Uh, and the committee had really concluded that it was, it was kind of impossible to take any action on this without that really fundamental basic, like what is the current state of play in, on this issue? Um, and with, so the other, so we have that now. And then we also now have at least kind of high level, a few different scenarios of different approaches that uh, communities could take to address the issue. Um, we've, so this report has been presented to each of the select boards. They've each kind of reported back to the committee um, with kind of their, their general response to the report and the mapping and their, uh, their preference at least at a high level among the different scenarios that were offered and their instinct around regional collaboration you know, based on the work to date and what they heard from the contractor on this, uh, do they still like the idea of, of working together? And I, I think it's fair to say that in all cases, everyone agreed that they, uh, they think it continues to make a lot of sense to work together on this issue. And that's feedback that we've received at a, at a state and even federal level that it, you know, regional approaches make a lot of sense on this issue. Um, so I'm not going into the, the weeds on it. I'd be going, this might feel like the weeds, but there's a lot more weeds on this. Uh, um, so where things are at right now is the broadband committee is meeting again next week to really dig into the responses from the select boards and put together uh, recommended next steps to move this forward. And um, this is all really important and exciting in general, but I think part of what's driving it is there is a particular moment in time right now um, from a funding standpoint. Right. There are like millions, billions of dollars moving at the federal level into this issue, at the state level to this issue. And those funds are gonna go to places that are ready, that have done some of this work, that have made, built the regional collaborations that need to be in place that have a plan. Um, so we're feeling really good and excited about the fact that, that these communities have come together, are proactively working together on this issue and positioning the region to, to hopefully uh, take advantage of funding that we expect to be available in the coming year. Um, so it's a big, it's a big complicated issue. Uh, and in some ways, adding the regional collaboration mix into something like that, you could make the case that that just makes it more complicated. But in this case, I think given 
again, I think really constructive engagement by the town managers and the select boards. Um, we're really seeing a very real, timely, tangible opportunity for impactful regional collaboration among, among the communities that have been involved in, in the CDA and the Mahusuk Way work. So uh, sorry if I'm going on a little bit, but it's, it's an exciting, exciting moment and really great work by the towns to work together on this stuff. Yes, Mike, that's why I continue to reflect on, I'm so glad that we started this process when we did, when we started this process two years ago, it, we had, again, no idea about this pandemic, but also the many billions and billions of dollars that were trickling down specifically to address things like broadband, housing, et cetera. You know, um, we, it might feel like we're still just getting started in many ways we are, but we are just that much further ahead than than we would be otherwise. So thanks for that update. Um, did you want to talk about the tourism efforts? Um, kind of more, more than our local region, but broadly. Yeah, yeah, again, just very, very briefly, as we think about regional collaboration, I know in the context of, of the CDA process, there was a very explicit focus on folks being interested in and really wanting to see more and uh, better collaboration among the communities in the Mahusuk region. And so that, that's what we've been talking about. And it feels like there's really great progress on that front. But as we think about regional opportunity, I just want to share with everyone that the Northern Forest Center has taken some of the experience we've had with the CDA process. And we're doing some similar work in Northern New Hampshire and the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont uh, around this, uh, we call it the Rural Tourism Academy. Uh, and we're still fairly early in that process, but, but it's really notable that there is a lot of interest in, you know, to some degree, bigger regional collaboration, not on everything, not on fixing sidewalks and things like that, but, but really to be thinking strategically about where are those points um, where at a minimum information sharing, uh, you know, community of uh, community of practice type, like convening groups for, for shared learning across the slightly bigger geography uh, may make a lot of sense. And then more, more specifically, we've heard in some of these conversations that folks in Gorham uh, who are very, you know, really diving into this issue, very, very focused on putting plans together around the recreation economy there are, are both really intrigued by what they're seeing coming out of the Mahusuk Way process uh, but also interested in, in thinking strategically about connectivity and collaboration across kind of between the Mahusik Bethel area and the Gorham area. So I just offer that again as a, you know, we can think about regional collaboration at a lot of, at a lot of levels and it, it makes sense to think about it at all those levels in the appropriate ways. You can't, it doesn't make sense to do everything at a big regional level, but it makes a lot of sense for us to be thinking about what are the connections within the Mahusik area, but then the connections out from the Mahusik area uh, into other communities that are working on similar, similar issues. Yeah, I'll just quickly add to that, um, that there is a, a, a project portal for the what Mike is describing in New Hampshire and Vermont. And uh, we've recently launched a discussion board and it's because of the, you know, similar geography and, and um, proximity to the region, we definitely welcome any of you to jump in on that uh, discussion board over there. You know, it's not just confined to, to the, I mean, it's only half an hour away to Gorham, <laughs> and not confined to uh, people in that region. But also I think too, that having some people from here participate in that way and just kind of pay attention will open some doors for the, you know, the potential of, of um, working together in the future, sharing ideas, you know, some of the stuff Mike was just talking about, but I'll, I'll post that in the uh, chat if you wanna check it out. Um, and obviously you can reach out to Mike or me if you had other questions about that. That's great. It's great to know we've been a little bit of a, a, bit of a guinea pig, a little bit of inspiration to others. Um, that seems like a, a pat on the back. Um, I still like to call it a model, not a guinea. A model, a model. Yes, of course. And every place will have its own flavor for sure. Um, <clears throat> thanks for those updates. Uh, uh, Amy or Mike or Amy Halstead, would anyone like to update on the 
um, the pledge and the number of leaders we have, embracers, if you will. I haven't gone in to look at the numbers recently. Okay, I, 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 did it. I went in at 1159 this morning. Nice. Uh -huh. Perfect. Okay. You can count on me. So I, um, there are 127 embracers, and by embracers, let me define that, as people who have taken the pledge. We have in our overall database for receipt of newsletter, LBZ, you know, the lunchbox Zoom notifications, et cetera, around 250. Um, and so this is just a reminder for me to everyone here to kindly amplify, amplify. So if you're sitting in a committee meeting, if you are on a, have a chat available, like at the land trust, I'm on the stewardship committee. So I always post the take the pledge link into the stewardship committee chat. And so what that does, it just makes it instantly available for people. Um, I do wanna say that our numbers over the last couple of months have gone from around 70 to 120. And that's because we are in person at all kinds of events. Like we were in the art markets, we went down to the Andrews Goggin Adventure with the Chisholm Ski Club and Envision Rumford, that was really cool. Um, we hope to be up at Sunday River for Fall Festival. Jesse and Gabe from Inland Woods and Trails took a whole bunch of stickers and cards and things to be at Harvest Fest at the, at the um, this past weekend. So that being in person, makes all the difference. And we have these little cards that have the QR on the back. You hand it to someone and they have it. So um, nice work, everybody. But I would like to see uh, that exponential growth. Let's just say it was 50 over a couple of months. Let's make it 100 over the next month. Mike, that was for you expressly. I, I think that was excellent. We do have more communications tools coming out as well. So uh, stand by. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. Um, and Amy Scott shared in the chat, if there's any of you lingering out there who have not taken the pledge, please do. It's very easy to do. And take that extra two seconds to share it to among your friends. That would be super helpful. And there's one other thing, sorry, but you know what? We need um, all the people on this group to go onto our Facebook page, which is the um, Mahusik Way and Pledge to Embrace Our Place. And please like it and share it with your networks. So all these things we are talking about are really impactful. And um, on social media, it works. It only works as well as your network of networks are willing to like and share. Thank you. Um, if, <clears throat> if one of you wants to post that link in the chat too, that would be helpful, I think. Um, great. So we're, we're doing so well on our agenda time today. Thank you everyone who has spoken so far. Uh, we've set aside about 15 minutes to open up the discussion and, and boy, do we really breeze over some really meaty topics today. So if anyone wants to jump right in and get some things on the table, um, please do. Feel free to write in the chat or... Uh, Hey, Jesse, yep, I, have ahead, a I have a question for Donna. Okay. I'm curious how um, the Office of Tourism is seeing the reaction to the state's campaign. You know, what kind of analytics the state is seeing, what kind of response we're getting from the business community throughout the state. You know, have you received any feedback, um, you know, the lookout for Maine campaign? That is a terrific question. <laughs> Uh, we have actually received a lot of excellent uh, response on that campaign and the request to expand it beyond what we've been able to do so far. So in the future, you're going to see a much expanded Lookout for Me campaign. And uh, I can't tell you exactly what that's going to look like, but it's a work in progress. So uh, I think just stay tuned. Uh, and the landowners have been very appreciative. And several of them have reached out to us with letters and saying, keep up the good work. So uh, 
that says I, that says a lot because we don't frequently hear from them. So, uh, yes, it's been an excellent campaign. I don't have all the stats. I can't share those with you today. But uh, uh, and we're in the process of of uh, going out to bid again on our advertising uh, contract. So. Uh, the new ad agency, whatever that one will be, will be taking up the, the campaign. Donna, can I follow up with a very specific question? Since we have spent two years working on this, is it possible, and this may be asking for a lot, but when the time comes to actually link to those of us regionally who have pledges that are very similar, you know, and sort of point to, um, you know, like Western Maine, it, and I don't know quite, it wouldn't necessarily be when you see the spot on the television, but through newsletters or other um, augmented parts of the campaign. I think it would really help boost us. Um, so just something to consider. I will definitely take that back. We have to be really careful, uh, as you can imagine. But I think perhaps um, certainly newsletter uh, mention is entirely possible. In fact, I think we already have put you out there as a model uh, on a number of occasions, but uh, that can be done again. So just uh, Jennifer Geiger is the contact in our office uh, for that particular project. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Donna. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Well, I have a little update um, slash announcement. Um, okay, go for it. Becca, introduce yourself. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry I was a little late today. Uh, my name is Becca Hoskins. I am the resident slash in-house um, illustrator and graphic designer at the Mahusik Land Trust, um, a freelance science illustrator, and I live up at the Mahusik Guide Services property with Polly and Kevin. Um, and I'm very interested in the topic of um, affordable housing in the area um, and in Maine in general. Um, and so I had a phone call with Amy Scott earlier today, uh, where I told her I was like very activated on the issue. So if there's ever a need for, um, feet on the ground for anything, I'm available for that. Um, but, uh, Liz Repetto and I were both at the, how can I help meeting, um, this week that's hosted by Lucy Abbott. And we are talking about and planning to start a local news podcast um, that kind of fills in the gaps that are left between um, the Bethel Citizen and the Team Bethel Facebook page. There's this kind of space that needs to be filled, we think, by something that is like informative and has updates about meetings like this or um, board, like city board meetings that might be helpful to have attendees at, um, um, events, community things. And this is a way that people who don't live in Bethel can also plug in um, and kind of support that other um, community engagement pillar. So that's the update. We'll keep you guys posted. Super exciting. The, the, really cool. The, this uh, thing of Lucy's that Becca's talking about is open to everyone. And it, it, it happens on the uh, night of the full moon every month. Oh. Yeah. What was that? This is strategy. <laughs> yeah. That's a part of it. Yeah, and she, hey. she finds uh, interesting places to to meet and uh, just talks about, you know, trying to bring in people who are interested in getting involved in the community, but people even better if people have ideas and they need somebody to flesh them out. Think about that. And if you want any more details, just get hold of Lucy. 
That's great. I love this idea of a podcast. I know Liz has been on the idea of starting a Bethel radio station, mm -hmm. um, which is, a, that's a whole other level. <laughs> yeah. But she brought that up first. <laughs> yeah. She brought up the radio station thing first and I, she, and then all the heads turned to me as like the young person in the group, like, is that oh, viable? And I said, well, I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> I know I, know I don't <laughs> put the radio on, so. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if Rageley can do it, anybody can do it. Um, <laughs> That's. <laughs> but uh, she did say something along those lines, but yeah, <laughs> I think for now to start a podcast because anyone can download it. Um, you know, we may or may not include a music section. I'm thinking like ten minutes max, just a little update for whoever is interested. Nice. Mm -hmm. There's some potential there. I think you should reach out to someone I know very well named Gabe Perkins, who would be very interested in this. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'll, sign, I'll assign him to that uh, role. Uh, awesome. Old great. people <laughs> listen to podcasts too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you, if, if you suddenly have like 20 people who are like, I must participate in your podcast, mm -hmm. then a radio station. Amazing. Yeah, the more help, the better. I think consistency seems to be the most challenging part of having a podcast. So um, no doubt. the more hands, it, the better. It, it is a really interesting idea. Even again, as you, if you uh, just thinking about content and how do you organize and bring consistency to it for this group to think about, is there a, you know, is there a regular point of participation in something like that to use the podcast as an opportunity to, to do this type of thing that we're doing now to share information about things that are going on, you know, within this strategy. So that, that's really appreciate you raising that and thinking about it. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think there, there would certainly be a place for like a regular download of like information from these meetings to share out. Cool. Well, has thanks something. resident young person. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Steve, what's up? Well, I have a I have a problem and maybe you can help me with it. We have we've been hearing forever about the the uh, corridor, the CMP corridor, and it's it's question one on the ballot, you know, and you vote vote yes if you don't want it, which is bad already. Uh -huh. But now all of a sudden, we're hearing about question one, being <sighs> this deal where you where you what is it what's what's the word you can uh retroactive retroactive you can you, you can create laws retroactively and then go back and see who broke them back there before they were written but the i mean the that whole notion is crazy to me but what's even crazier is these two things are claiming to be on question one and if so it looks to me like it's a it's a scam if, if you vote know that you don't want this retroactive uh, lawmaking, you are voting that you want the, the uh, corridor. So I don't, I haven't figured, I haven't found anybody who can tell me how you can do that, why there are two different subjects on, on one question, but it doesn't work in my book. Huh. So if you, Amen, Steve. So I think this yeah. is, I, mean, I don't know this is a, that the Manusik way can pick up this kind of mantle, but I do think that this is really on thoughtful, mindful people's minds that, that the wording of these, these um, whatever you call them, referendums, whatever they are, are really tricky. Yeah, well, um, they are. That's, that's bad yeah. enough, but putting two things on, hoping to reach out to people who would normally say, I don't want the, the, the uh, corridor and asking them to say, well, do you, do you on the same, same ticket, I mean, this, the same article, would you, do you want uh, <clears throat> retroactive bill, uh, laws? And so Becca, Becca, it would be cool to pick that up in the podcast or, um, you know, what is the forum locally for people who are concerned about this kind of thing? And is there, you know, we have the lunchbox Zooms and we're always 15 to 30 people, something like that. Um, 
how do how does a community of the all four towns the region address this to inform the people that live here i think that's really a critical lovely piece to think about and i have no idea what the solution is on how to convey clear answers to steve what i think is on a lot of people's minds well it isn't i don't think because i, I haven't seen an article in the paper i haven't seen a, a letter to the editor i haven't seen anybody talk about the fact that this is nuts except me yeah i, I think this is it's a great example of the kind of thing that uh can benefit from constructive communication vehicles and, and, and dialogues. I think it's probably pretty well beyond our, our scope today. Uh, yeah, it kind just, of tie, ties into just the whole world of political campaigns and communication and marketing and how different people try to sell different things in different ways. Yeah, uh, but so yeah, I, I think it's, a great, it's a great example of, of and this. I guess yeah. I'll go to this, the, uh, Secretary of State next. I don't know where to turn for this thing. Yeah, he might be more helpful than this group. <laughs> well, I mean, you can also, uh, you can write the editorial or the letter to the editor that you want to see in the world, too. Oh, I know. I, I've, been, I've been known to do that. Have you ever done that, Steve? I, Steve <laughs> might have experience with that. Um, <laughs> well, it, does, it, is a, it is an example of there's, there's always going to be some issue that needs some, you know, improved education before we vote on it and if uh, honestly uh, if there's a we're kind of in this radio hole we really are actually we do have our member uh woxo radio actually was recently purchased by uh it closed down for a while and was recently purchased by a guy who's always dreamed of his own radio station but but that's in oxford hills and he's i think he's thinking about starting up something in rumford but you know, there are, those numbers really aren't that far away and that's the most local radio station we have. And so uh, honestly, if they're looking for really local content, maybe there is a partnership there. So like, that's something that we, the family with, if you, if we really get serious about this, like the, you know, the five minute update on, on this particular region, because um, that both, I mean, there are radio stations out there that, um, that are supposed to be covering this area. Although um, right here in the village, it can be tricky sometimes depending on what you're trying to pick up on. But anyway, I love this idea. I'd love to talk to you more about it, Becca. Um, there. Jesse, I've got, can I build on sure. that for just a second before sure. we lose time here? Um, yep. Just to say one one more point about the um, the podcast idea and the radio station idea, the uh, What TV would be a great partner because they oh, yep. moved to uh, to a platform where um, you can stream their, um, the events that they're recording, but then they also, you can also go and watch things on demand. Um, and that's, uh, so there's a platform already for sharing events that are going on in the community that's different from a podcast, but would be very complimentary. And I bet they would be very open to working together on that. So that's one thing. And then the second thing that's also proactive and less confusing than what do we do about this question one thing <laughs> is um, for another upcoming opportunity to share the pledge is the Fall Fest at Sunday River. Uh, we've secured a table to have stickers and you know pledge cards, uh, but what we need are people to help um, man the table and be there to talk with people and hand out stickers. So if you are interested in either volunteering yourself or helping to find volunteers, um, please let me know. The more we can get the word out, the better. Um, it is going to be a simple and fun job of just talking to people and encouraging them to be a part of taking care of the place. Um, and it, it, of course, it will be beautiful wet weather and it will be perfect for standing outside all day, right, Neil? Um, so October 9th and 10th is the will definitely be peak foliage and uh, many wonderful friendly people to talk to, which is right. <laughs> and I have some insight from having done this, I think four full days <laughs> over the summer. And so people, well, people are really interested in it. And I would just say it's, you know, it's like leave no trace, but broader because people can grab that handle and then, you know, workforce housing and, and people really get interested and then they sign up and then we scour MailChimp to see how many new embracers we have. 
But if anyone wants to do it or has people, you can always refer them to me just to talk through a little bit um, what it's like to talk to people about it. Yeah, it's good to have a little script. Don't be don't be scared of what like what you have to say. Um, the, I, I think that there are several people that can provide those tools if you haven't done it before. Oh, well, that we're already a little bit over time. Good discussions today. It's directions I never thought we'd go in. Uh, this is great. I love it. This is why we get together every once in a while. See what happens. Um, so if anyone needs help connecting to anyone else on the Zoom today, please feel free to reach out to me at jessiefethelmain.com. I'd be happy to plug you into to whoever. Uh, really, really appreciate all the town managers, Vern, Retta, Kim, chipping in today and for your meeting. Our pleasure. And your continued commitment to uh, work together um, warms the cockles of my heart, truly. Um, I would love to be on all of your email lists about your agendas and things like that. <laughs> I, I pay attention to Bethel. I admit that I could pay closer attention to the others, but if there's any way that you want to be interacting with business community, please feel free to, to talk to me personally um, and, and I'll do what I can. Um, thank you all for your time today. We will do it again next month and enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks everyone. Thanks. For thank you. Bye-bye.